Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name's Lida and this is my garden. Yes, for the first time ever in adult life, I have a garden and I was so excited I had to film a video out here almost immediately. As you can see, because I've never been a garden owner before, I don't own any garden furniture. So please enjoy this very fetching camping chair. I realise that it's been a while since I've talked to you about books. I also realise that I am having a quarter year crisis in that I've moved I'm physically emotionally, spiritually exhausted. And I realized there was a tag for that. It's called the quarter year crisis book tag. And it was created by Roisin Reads. Uh, I'm now realizing that when I was setting up this video, it was a great idea to film outside, but now the British skies are saying otherwise. Let's see how much I can do of this before we get shut down. Um, but as it's been a bit of a chaotic few weeks for me, I thought we'd just have a little, have a little calm sit down, get our Kate Nash, mug out with a cup of coffee just sit in the garden and chat about reading the first question in the tag is how many books have you read so far this year the answer to that roisin and all watching is 25. my goal is 100 so if i had actually been filming this at the time of it being a quarter year i'd be right on track however because it's a crisis tag i'm obviously filming it <laughs> later than i technically should be and i am behind by i think about five books but i am in the middle of four books so does that excuse me <laughs> who can say second question is have you already found a book you think might be a 2022 favorite if not what was your favorite book you read that wasn't quite five stars so I've actually been doing a little bit of rereading this year, which was an unwritten down, <laughs> but very much felt um, kind of subconscious reading goal for me. I think I really haven't read, reread a lot of the books that I've loved in the last 10 years. And that's sad. So I reread Why We Broke Up by Daniel Handler, who if you don't know, he's also Lemony Snicket. And it was as good as I remember the first couple of times I read it in my early 20s. So freaking good. I also reread Resistance by Owen Shears, which I talked about on my Instagram. I'll link my little paragraph about that below. But um, safe to say that the news at the moment really made me think about it. And it was uh, a good read to process when we think about invasion, when we think about the impacts of war on interpersonal relationships. And um, yeah, I can't fault this book. I thought it was still incredible. But if I was gonna give five stars to a book I've read so far, sadly it isn't yet. And I have to tell this to you just because just come closer <clears throat> it isn't yet a women's prize for the fiction book um if you don't know i i read all of the women prize women's prize for fiction books last year and i'm trying to get through as many as i can this year although my life is slightly more upside down than it was last year and i'm not in lockdown but so far i've actually been a little bit sad with what i've tried from the women's prize i'll tell you what i've tried i tried Flamingo, which I actually thought was going to be awful, but it turned out to be really incredibly well written. Some beautiful descriptions and representation of how somebody's life can go south and somebody can be living without a home that I thought was just really well treated. But unfortunately, it really fell down at the end. Really, like it really tanked. Such a face plant in the last hundred pages. I don't know what happened. Rachel, what happened? I did read The Island of Missing Trees by Elif Shafak, which was really, really good. But because I've read other books by Elif Shafak and they were objectively, well, subjectively, obviously, because it's my opinion, subjectively better um, for like, I could literally write in this essay, I will discuss why. I have to stand by my principal belief that I don't think somebody should win um, the Women's Prize for Fiction if it's not their best book, as well as the best book in the list. So for that, I can't count it as my as my winner, even though I did really love it and she's really talented. I tried reading the sentence and that was also a massive fail for me. I actually have DNF'd it at this point. I might come back to it, but I did DNF it. I'm struggling <laughs> through The Exhibitionist, really dragging my heels with this one as well. So, so far my women's prize reading has really tanked and I'm sad about it. So if there's any that you've already read that you recommend, please leave your recommendations in the comments of what I should try next. I'm reading the Ruth Ezeki at the moment and I'm not feeling it. Like, is it me? Is there something wrong with me? But it's okay because I do have an answer for this question. And my ultimate answer is Mad About You by Varian McFarlane. She's one of the only authors that I've read all of the books of and this came out this weekend and I've already finished it. It is another stonking, hilarious, really well written rom-com um, that also features some incredibly tense 
wedding showdowns, an online cancellation, and a lot of stuff around, not even just around, centering female solidarity. Um, so for that, I loved it as much as all of the others. <laughs> Predictably, she's still a genius. Why isn't she on the Women's Prize for Fiction list? Even just line to line, her writing is better than a lot of the writing that I've been reading on the Women's Prize long list. So that is my five star read for this year so far, hands down. The next question is any one star books or least favourite books of the year? The book that has disappointed me the most, I think, was My Broken Vagina. It was supposed to be about vaginismus and broken vaginas and it ended up being like quite a lengthy investigative journalist romp <laughs> about a woman going to like a sex camp, how scandalous, and not really exploring, like quoting a lot of data without context, not really answering the premise of the book, and like as somebody who suffers with vaginismus, like frankly, really disappointing. Does this is this isn't the book that you're looking for <laughs> if you were hoping for that to be this. And maybe I've just overread books about sex because I just used to have a podcast about books about sex called The Banging Book Club. Um, so I've just read a lot of stuff like this. I don't know why it was commissioned because I've read this book before like a million times and I feel a little bit cheated by the premise because it didn't deliver. And that's your warning. <laughs> but if somebody does know a good book about vaginismus, please recommend to me, lest I have to write it myself. Most read genre so far, um, that has to be, it's just generally fiction. I would say, probably say it's literary fiction, although at this point, kind of regretting that. I think I should go, I think I should go off genre for the year because I think maybe it's me. Maybe I've overread literary fiction and I'm, I'm getting bored of the tropes that rightly you're allowed to hit if you're a literary, fiction genre writer um, because it is a genre and it does have tropes but I as a reader um, I feel a little bit exhausted. <laughs> so it's fiction, it's literary fiction but I would like that to change and ideally and in other years my reading percentage has been 50-50 fiction and non-fiction so I'd like that to be better. A book that surprised you. The Title Zone by Sarah Moss, even though I know Sarah Moss is a really good writer, I wasn't sure about the premise of this book and it's still surprised me because it was so like I was expecting it to be god tier but it was more like who's above god the, the fickle motivations of atoms the the universe overall the matter the supreme ruler that makes Yahweh look like a silly man with a hat I don't know it was it was even more than I thought it was going to be so actually why wasn't that in my top books I'm not sure we'll put that in top books as well but the tidal zone really took me back because I feel like the subject matter is something that I've read a lot about and I've just felt like it, it wasn't something that I was really personally drawn to but it just sucks you in and rips your freaking heart out and I loved it rip it out again Sarah why don't you a book that's come out in 2022 already that you want to read but haven't yet. I have two clauses for this. One, if I was answering this question directly, I'd say it's Sheila Hetty. Her new book is out and I have a copy on the way to me, but I haven't yet read it and it's gonna happen and it's gonna be so good. But because I am very lucky and I get sent books in advance, books that haven't actually come out yet, but have been sent to me and I'm really, really excited to read. One, Aisha Malik has a book called The Movement coming out, which is all about a woman who decides to stop talking to make a point and accidentally starts like a movement. Um, she wrote Sophia Khan is Not Obliged and This Green and Pleasant Land, two of my favorite books ever. So I am freaking really excited about that. And also um, my friend and ex-colleague Lily Linden has written this rom-com called Double Booked, Two Lives, Twice the Fun. And frankly, it kind of sounds like Mrs. Doubtfire, but a woman trying to lead a life where she's dating a man and a life where she's dating a woman and they don't know about each other. And I am so on board, it hurts. Goal you've made that you've succeeded at. So at the moment, my page goal was 25,000 pages and I'm 34% through that. I'm actually 1,103 pages ahead. <laughs> but the boasting ends there because I am behind on all other goals. Five, five books behind my my book goal and also I had this goal if, in this video you can watch it up there if you want to see where I was going to read books in themes the themes were Midlands for which I've only read the title zone although in the exhibitionist the woman is sleeping with the MP for Coventry so I don't know if that counts Forest so I've read the island of missing trees but zero else so far 
Romani, haven't read any books from that reading list yet, and Indigenous, which I have read Braiding Sweetgrass and I am halfway through the sentence but I don't want to finish it because it's not for me. <laughs> Sadly, the premise was really great, but I'm not enjoying the writing. So I don't think I can count that if I don't finish it, although maybe I will. So I'm behind on those as well. I need to get to that, but in my defense, my life is in boxes and my brain is probably currently with a carrier pigeon somewhere in the air. It feels like it hasn't quite been delivered to this house yet. I feel like the brain got lost in transit. So self-forgiveness, self-acceptance, rain down on me. Don't actually rain down on me, please stay up there. <laughs> <laughs> there is a lot of water in that sky. I guess that answers my one goal I made that I need to focus on. My thematic reading around those goals definitely needs to come into faster and also I want to finish some of the non-fiction books I'm halfway through. I did want to give a mention actually to this book that I'm halfway through, The Law in 60 Se Seconds, A Pocket Guide to Your Rights. As soon as I saw this book, I was like, obviously, why didn't I notice that I didn't have this book? Um, Chris Weaver is a barrister and he talks about one of the inspirations for writing with the book was that he's like dealt with systemic racism within the police and he wanted to write a book so that everybody has like a basic guide to their rights and it covers everything from renting, relationships, shopping, transport, healthcare, money, employment, alcohol and other drugs, the digital world, activism, on the street and the justice system. I'd say this book is most useful if you live in England and Wales, um, that's what most of the laws cover, especially around protests stop and search stuff like that that I was, I've struggled to find like concrete dependable answers on on the internet they're in here and obviously I'm not reading it fast because it's a book about law <laughs> but it's really really accessible and easy to read and it kind of feels like more like a piece of equipment that you should have around so I'm reading that and um, yeah I'd like to read more non-fiction I guess to level that out and then the last question is new to you booktubers bookstagrammers or book talkers for 2022 that you recommend <laughs> I did a video recommending smaller YouTubers in December and a few of those were booktubers so I'll link that again up there but to be honest I haven't really discovered anything new in 2022 I'm gonna need your help for that one so please let me know if you know particularly any booktubers but I guess I could try some book talkers I'm not downloading the app to my phone because <laughs> I'm very tinfoil hatty about that and I refuse. I just refuse to download TikTok onto my phone. I'm sorry. But if you want to send me any book talk links, I will watch them on an incognito browser. And the same with bookstagrammers, like I have just been following the same people for ages. So you're gonna need to bring this grandma into 2022. <laughs> kicking and screaming, please help. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like book videos, you can find more of those here. If you like any other kind of random chill out videos, you can find those all around here. This video is made possible by The Gumption Club and you can click here to subscribe to see more rambles and tune in to watch me potentially fail on all my goals throughout life, but it will be entertaining <laughs> if nothing else. Thank you for watching, Frog's Not Out. <laughs>